it's a really heavy topic to talk about slavery and to talk about the experience of enslaved people. Um, and I wasn't sure that the students were really going to be all in, but to see them sort of like zoned in and doing their own thing and kind of like shutting out the rest of the world, I knew that I presented it the right way because for 40 minutes, you could hear a pin drop because they were so invested in what they were learning and how these enslaved people were fighting back. When first introducing People Not Property to the website, I walk the students through the website myself. I introduce, you know, what the, the concept of the website is and that it's local, that it's in the Hudson Valley, and that gets them excited because they say, wait, there was slavery in our backyard in the Hudson Valley? Like, that's crazy. The way that the website is broken down is that each chapter can essentially stand on its own. So depending on what the teacher wants to focus on, they can look at one part of the website. They can look at one video. They can look at one primary source. It just depends on how they want to use those different resources. I have encouraged my colleagues to use the website in some fashion, even if they can't use the entire thing, because it, it's new information. And because it's local, because it's talking about specific individuals, not Harriet Tubman, which is someone that all the kids essentially know, but these lesser known heroes of a local story from the perspective of these individuals. When walking the students through the website, I started with the main menu that's on the top right corner. It's a table of contents. And for students, it's a really easy way to navigate the website because it goes in order. And as you click on each tab, you'll see the titles of different articles, of different themes, of different chapters. And there's also symbols to indicate you know, what the different media resources are. I might suggest, hey, look for anything that has a camera next to it. If I know that they really like to read, hey, why don't you check out anything that has a book next to it? If you prefer to do the primary source reading, then you can do that. And it just is accessible because of the way the website is laid out. You can kind of pick and choose, you know, what you as a student find more interesting. My students were really interested in the resistance piece uh, because they consider themselves rebels, I think. You know, this age group of 14 to 18, they're looking to challenge authority. So to find out that these enslaved people did minor things, which I think they would seem as minor, but make a huge difference, whether it's stealing food or singing a hymn, I think the students resonate with that because they say like, oh, okay, these guys were active in their resistance. It wasn't just, this passive like, oh, this is my life and there's nothing I can do. They found other simple ways for them to have their own form of resistance. There was one student that was working in the resistance section and the bell rang and you know a lot of people didn't move and I had to tap them on the shoulder to let them know like, hey, the bell rang because they had their earbuds in. And one student had his earbuds out but was still reading. I was like, hey, you know, you, you're gonna be late to class. He goes, but I can't, like I need to know what happens to him. And I was like, well, we're gonna be back tomorrow, so like, don't worry about it. He goes, no, but I, I need to know. I can't leave and go to math without finding out what happened to him. And I just remember thinking like, wow, like this kid was so invested that he didn't wanna to go to math, wanted a late pass, because he needed to know how the story was going to end.